out of all the cameras that I have access to, typically these two cameras are going to be the ones that I use 90% of the time, even though these are great. The videos that I make are shot on a array, a large array of, of different video cameras. Anywhere from action cameras to iPhones to point shoots all the way to like to something like this where it's like a proper like DSLR or SLR with a, a separate lens and a separate microphone. But there's really two two cameras that I use most of the time for most of my videos, despite all the other all the other cameras that are cool and I like, but there's two that I depend on the most. One more than the other. One of them you have to actually go out and buy, and then the other one you actually just have in your pocket, which you probably already know what that one is. Uh, you actually probably might know what both of them are, but. A lot of my a lot of my videos start start early in the morning, right when I wake up, and they they follow me throughout my day. My videos are pretty much a depiction of whatever I did that specific day. If I go running in the mornings, then typically my running is in in the video, unless I'm deliberately not wanting to include that in the video. If I go on a walk, then I'll probably bring my camera. If I go into a meeting, probably I'll probably bring my camera in a meeting. And most of the time, when my when my days begin with running, the camera that I use to shoot that mostly is just going to be my iPhone. Now before my iPhone, I typically would use something like this, the Insta360 GO 3, and I still do use it, but I found that my iPhone, because of the three lenses instead of this one singular wide angle lens, I can get more dynamic shots with with the, with the, with the iPhone. And I'm, I, I gotta have it anyway for my music, so it's just, if I wanna do a lot of talking head stuff, then typically this is going to be a lot better for my running because it's magnetic and it can clip onto things, but typically nine times out of 10, uh, if I don't really want to think about making a video and it's just more spontaneous then I typically use my iPhone And then for talking heads or for any other shot that I want the quality just to be really good And I want as much flexibility as I can after the fact and in editing I'm typically going to use what I'm shooting on right now Which is my Sony a7s3 with a 12 to 24 G master and a I think it's a Sony ECM B1M microphone for for my audio all of my talking head stuff is shot with this this camera and I use the audio from the microphone that's on the camera uh, for every single one of my, my talking heads. I tried the Rode video mic like go things, but honestly this this microphone on the camera sounds a million times better. Out of all the cameras that I have access to, typically these two cameras are going to be the ones that I use 90% of the time, even though these are great. For me, choosing camera gear, it's always, there's always one principle I try to adhere to the, the most. And th this is the guiding principle that I use whenever I'm, I'm making anything. What is the least amount of gear that I can take that will do the job of getting me the best image quality, but also like not being a tremendous pain in the butt to have to look around. Sometimes like when I'm running an iPhone or just an Insta360 camera is the maximum amount of weight and maximum amount of gear that I want to take. Uh, and it gives me just, it gives me exactly what I need for the image quality and just the capabilities of the actual of the actual camera. And then sometimes I am able to carry a little bit more like the Sony a7S III. And depending on the situation, I may break down the kit further or expand it further, meaning that I may, if I need to break it down more, I will take the, the microphone off and just have the camera and the lens. Or if I want to expand it, I could put this on a gimbal or I could put it on a tripod or a monopod or, or whatever else. And I think that's why I have the, the iPhone and the Sony a7S III as the two cameras that I use the most is because they both occupy the opposite sides of the spectrum. If I need to go as lightweight as I possibly can. I'm just going to have my phone because I'm gonna have it anyway and it doesn't affect my personal life like, like whatsoever. But on the other side, if I want to go out specifically to film things, then I'm going to take the camera that's going to give me the best image quality that I possibly can, despite the uh, the size or how much I have to actually carry. So basically, to put it to put it simply, if I want to keep it super simple and I want it to not be intrusive on my life, then I'm going to use the the, the iPhone. If I don't mind carrying a camera around, then I'm going to use I'm going to use the one that gives me the best image that that I possibly can get. Obviously, everybody's going to have their own opinion on this, but that's just that's just mine. Um, uh, I'll link everything down below that you, you, if you might be interested in, if you're interested in checking it out, it's it'll be down there. Uh, before I forget, there's also a third camera that I use, uh, and it ha it's strictly for B-roll. It's this really, it's this really cheap kind of crappy uh, point and shoot camera we got for 50 bucks. Uh, it zoom, it zooms to like it's like 40 times. It is a 40 times zoom, which is incredible. And I use this, I use this a lot, but. Uh, it's like, this is like the third camera, if I, like this doesn't produce a great image, it has a specific look, but uh, 
yeah, I just wanted to mention it just because, you know.